Yeah, sure. Uh, limb girdle muscular dystrophy is a large group of muscle diseases, uh, some of which are inherited in an autosomal dominant fashion, some in an autosomal recessive fashion, and by and large they're characterized by weakness of the shoulders and hip girdles first, and then some go on to develop weakness in other parts of the body too. Uh, most of the limb girdle muscular dystrophies are recognized uh, either in the teenage years if they're on kind of the moderate to severe spectrum, uh, but sometimes into adulthood. Uh, there are some forms, particularly of the autosomal recessive kind, that do present in earlier in childhood. Uh, and then there are some that don't even get clinically recognized until much later in life. And uh, occasionally those turn out to not be what we usually think of as limb girdle muscular dystrophy. Um, but turn out to be a problem with the metabolism of a cell, um, which ends up being um, acid maltase deficiency, which is sometimes called adult onset um, Pompe's disease. And you, we find these now more frequently because we're doing more genetic testing to try to figure out the molecular basis of the limb girdle muscular dystrophies. And so uh, because there are so many genes, uh, you sequence basically as many of them as you can get the patient's insurance to pay for. Uh, and then you find other things like metabolic myopathies or um, mitochondrial disease or things like uh, that instead of what we usually think of as just the limb girdle muscular dystrophies. Uh, so uh, inheritance patterns are one of the major clues that we use when we start to think about what genes might underlie someone's disorder. So if someone has uh, what we call autosomal dominant inheritance, we see that basically in one generation being passed to the next generation being passed to the next generation. And that occurs because you only need one bad copy of the gene in order to get the disease. So you inherit it from your affected parent and then you become affected and then 50% of your offspring inherit that mutation and they're likely to get the disease as well. So one bad copy of the gene leads to the disorder. Autosomal recessive, which is by far and away the most common cause of limb girdle muscular dystrophy, uh, you need two abnormal copies of the gene. So you get a bad copy of the dysferlin gene from your mom and a bad copy of the dysferlin gene from your dad, and now you have no functional dysferlin protein. And so you end up with fragile muscle fibers and getting muscular dystrophy. Now your parents, each of whom have a bad copy, probably have no symptoms because you only need half of the normal protein in order to have a normal functioning muscle fiber. Then there are of course uh, X-linked uh, inherited where you get a bad copy of the gene on the X chromosome and if you're a male that means that you're likely to be missing a good copy at all and so like for Duchenne muscular dystrophy or Becker's muscular dystrophy you get a disease. And then there are some rarer forms of inheritance like uh, mitochondrial inheritance where the problem is with the DNA that lives in a cell, uh, part of the cell, called the mitochondria, and that gets exclusively transmitted through uh, your mother. And so there are you know, rarer types of inheritance patterns, but when we're talking about limb girdle muscular dystrophy, most commonly we're thinking about autosomal recessive forms, and then secondarily autosomal dominant as the most common types.